Welcome to Principles of Engineering. This is the Trust Analysis Module, and we're looking to look at this uh, trust that you'll see up on your screen here. Uh, I apologize up front for my drawing abilities. They're not the best, but uh, we'll get the point across nonetheless. So looking at the truss, I've got elements in it from A, B, C, D, and E. I've got 200 pounds hanging at D. I've got 200 pounds hanging at B. It's supported by a pin at A. So a pin at A. And a uh, pin at a roller at C. Right there where my cursor flashes. So overall, if I want to look for determinacy on the truss, I basically can come in and I've got to be sure that my number of joints, so the formula 2J equals M plus R, where J is the number of joints in light blue, uh, and that number for the joints in here happens to equal uh, 3, 5, uh, equals to M, which is the number of members, those are in purple, so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, plus the number of reactionary forces. So the reactionary forces are those caused by the supports external to the truss or the overall truss system. When I look at those forces, the reactionary forces that are generated, you're going to see that at A, my pin is going to produce a reactionary force in the X and the Y direction, or two forces. My roller only in the Y direction, one force there. So that's going to result in uh, this equaling to 3. So then the big question is, is, is the formula valid? And you can see that 2 times 5 is 10, plus uh, does that equal to 7 plus 3? And the big answer is yes. So we are determinant. Uh, in that truss system. So let's get rid of that. We don't need to look at that anymore. So we know that we can solve the equation. So the basic premise of the very first thing we're going to start out with is we're going to sum the moments of the truss, of the external forces acting on the truss. So what I've got is I've got forces at A, B, C, and D acting on the truss. And the equation is simply says that if uh, I look at all of these moments or sum them, Uh, it's just going to say that the sum, sorry about that, make that an active layer. It just says that the sum of the moments throughout the truss has to equal to zero. So it's not rocking back and forth. So a few conventions we're going to use throughout this system here, and those conventions are going to basically be, and I'll put them in the upper right hand corner here, uh, it's going to be that plus is up and right and counterclockwise. So I'll just put those there and we'll leave them for now. So let's go back to talking about uh, this sum of the moments. So I already said that I have got a moment at D. I've got a moment at B. I've got a moment at C. And that takes care of all my moments. Now, I don't have a moment at A, and the reason for that is the moment formula equals a force times a displacement distance. The caveat on that, it's the force that's perpendicular at D. And by that, I mean that if this is point A, and I've got a moment arm, D, and a force acting on that, it's only the component of the force that's perpendicular to D, the line D. So hopefully that's a reminder and that makes sense from what we uh, looked at before. So with that said, let's go ahead and come back here and let's talk about the sum of the forces. So going to equal my force times my distance. So at D, it is going to equal to 200 pounds times my displacement. Now I didn't put my displacement on here when I drew this uh, the first time, but this is 3 units over, 6 units to B, 9 units to E, and it's 3 units up. So we can see that the moment at D is 200 pounds times 3 feet plus the moment at B 
is 200 pounds at 6 feet plus the moment at C is R F C Y times 9 feet. Now it's important to look at this and say, well, which way would this 200 pound force be pushing it? And what it would be doing is it would be pushing it over here, you can see, clockwise. So this is going to be a negative, a negative, and a plus. So what this really boils down to is I can say that this whole thing uh, is a minus 600 foot pounds. That's the force at D, or the moment at D, plus a minus 1,200 foot pounds. That is the moment at B, plus the force reactionary at C in the y direction times 9 feet just equal to 0. Or my reactionary force at C, Y direction is going to equal to the sum of these two, which is 1,800 foot pounds divided by 9 feet. You'll see my feet cancel out, and that equals out to 200 pounds up because it is positive. So what I've just done is I've just solved for this external force. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to replace RFCY and I want to go ahead and replace RFCY with my number here. The direction is correct. So I've got 200 pounds up. So that's pretty straightforward. That's how I sum my moments to end up zero. Let me go ahead and erase this. And all that that's saying is that overall, my truss is not rotating. So now I can come back and I can remember that we have the idea that the sum of the forces in the x has to equal to 0, and the sum of the forces in y has to equal to 0. And all that's saying uh, really simply is, hey, this whole truss system is not moving back and forth. And that's all that it's saying. So I erase that. So just starting out, let's start out in the x direction. And the only real force that we have operating in the x direction here is RFAX. So what I can really say here is that if the sum of the forces in the x direction equal to 0, 0 has to equal to reactionary force at A in the x direction, because it's the only one. So what I can do is I can once again go back to my reactionary force here. And I can erase this and put in that this is zero. Now it's a little bit redundant to do that, but I like to do it just so we can keep track of it. That's zero pounds. Great. So next up, I can say that the sum of the forces in Y equals to zero. And the forces I have working in the Y are 200 pounds up at C, 200 pounds down at B, 200 pounds down at D, and an unknown force at A, uh, probably acting up, but we don't know. So what I'm going to say is that is equal to the force at D plus the force at B plus the force at C plus the force at A. So I know using our convention that force at D is minus 200 pounds plus at B minus 200 pounds. The force at C is a plus 200 pounds. So now I'm going to say the force at A is called the reactionary force A in the y direction. It has to equal to zero. So I've accounted for all my forces. Pretty simple algebraic equation. What we can actually see is we can see that 
the reactionary force uh, at A in the y direction has to equal to 200 pounds. And because it's positive, it is up. So I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to go ahead and erase my RFAY. And I'm doing that for the graphic tablet just to make it simpler for you. And I can see that this is now 200 pounds up. Okay, that's essentially how we solve our truss from external forces. We first zero the moment, and then we zero the sum of the forces. So now I've got my truss, and I'm going to calculate some angles here uh, in the next video, but let's take a short break.